Hello friends, welcome back to my channel, welcome to the mid-year book freakout tag. I was not sure if I was actually going to do this this year because I actually tried to film this last week while I was in the midst of my like blood grace obsession um, and basically every single answer was just that series um, and I decided that that was not good enough to put out, you know what I'm saying? But I kind of decided I did want to do this tag because I've done it every year since I started booktube so far. Um, and I just, I don't know, like it's like the one and only video that I consistently do other than like my favorites videos at the end of the year. And so I figured we would try again today and I will try to diversify my answers a little bit. Um, I'll be sure to link the original creators down below. I know that there's like some variations on the questions floating around booktube. I don't actually know which version of the questions I have screenshotted currently on my phone, but this is what I have. And without further ado, we're going to start and go right into it. And the first question, of course, is best book you've read so far in 2023. Um, and I, this is a hard one because I actually have not read that many five stars this year. I think aside from like the Blood Grey series, which again, I'm not gonna <laughs> talk about in every single question, I've only given two books five stars and that was Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee and Catherine House by Elizabeth Thomas. Both five stars for very, very different reasons. Um, Untethered Sky is a fantasy novella about this world where there are these like manticores, which are obviously like these monsters and these giant birds of prey called rocks. Um, and these rocks have like human handlers and we're following a rock human pair um, and their kind of like working relationship, their bond. And I really, really emotionally loved this book. Like I thought that it was so emotional and it did so much in terms of like how much it fit in such a small book. And I really, really loved it. Um, and I loved my entire experience reading it. Catherine House, on the other hand, was just like a weird mind fuck kind of reading time. And it's a book that like, even after I finished it, I occasionally like think about it. I think about some of the messages, some of the conversations that are had in the book. I really, really love the like gothic vibes in it. I really love kind of some of the conversations on science um, and the ethics of science in that book. It reminded me a lot of Frankenstein in that sense. I have reading vlogs for both of these. So as usual, I think I do this every year, but I will link down below all the related videos to all the books I'm talking about if I have like reading vlogs or wrap ups where I talk about these books. Um, but I really loved my experience of reading Catherine House. It was a book where I'd seen a lot of people either give it five stars or like one star. And so I was very curious where I would land on this. And I'm so glad that it was like the five star experience for me personally. Question number two is best sequel you've read so far in 2023. And I think usually for this question, I like to answer with a sequel where I read like the first or second, whatever the previous books prior to this year, rather than like a series I've started and continued on in this year. But honestly, I don't think I've read that many sequels for a series that I started prior to this year. The only one I can think of off the top of my head, which I did really, really love, is The Children of Chaos by Trudy Skies. That being said, I did start this book last year, so I don't know if this counts, um, but I did really enjoy this. This was book two in the Cruel God series. Um, if you didn't know, The 13th Hour, the first book in the series, was one of my favorite books of last year. And I actually think I enjoyed book two a little bit more than book one. Um, this is a gas lamp, steampunky vibe, uh, very chaotic fantasy with this system where there are like 12 gods and each god has their own domain and citizens or denizens rather of these like domains live in this like central city and it is a very interesting, very fun kind of like just action packed high octane kind of story about these like different ecosystems and these different worlds and these different like gods and their hold on their people and I think it is such an interesting story and I love the characters. I think they're so fun, so entertaining. Book two I really really loved because in addition to the two POVs we got in book one we actually have like a kind of like a villain POV in book two and like the villain character is absolutely unhinged and I love her. <laughs> I actually love her so much um, and I loved having her POV. I loved book two. It was such a fun ride and it's one of those books where like as soon as I start reading it, I just fly through the pages. Like it's like a 600 page book and like it doesn't intimidate me in any way because like I just know I'm gonna have such a good time reading it. So I think best sequel, definitely that one for me personally. Question number three is new release you haven't read yet but want to. I feel like there are so many and yet not that many because I've actually like been fortunate enough this year to get a lot of ARCs and EARCs for the anticipated books I have. So like a lot of the anticipated releases 
in my mind. Like I've already read, like I've already read Kylie Lee Baker's new book, loved it. I've already read The Water Outlaws, which was an anticipated release. I guess technically, um, the last volume of The Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation came out. I now own the whole series, but I actually haven't read past volume one. So that would probably be my answer for the new release that I should be reading um, and haven't read yet. The other answer I have for this is actually The Faithless by C.L. Clark. I got an e-arc of this and then my pre-order for this book came in and I still haven't read it. The reason is because I want to reread The Unbroken before I read the Faithless because I read The Unbroken so long ago now. However, I just am not in the mood for like a big brain fantasy like that. And so I just haven't gotten into it, but I do want to get to it sooner rather than later. Um, and I feel like maybe my brain cells are coming back. So maybe, maybe I can get to it sooner rather than later. The next question is biggest disappointment. And I have one definitive answer and I have one, I'm not sure if I want to say this, but maybe I will. <laughs> but the first one is Delicious Monsters by Lizelle Sambury. Um, I don't think this was a bad book by any means. I think I gave it like three stars. I thought it was still good, but I just think that I was disappointed because again, if you watched my favorite videos from last year, the Blood Like Magic duology by this author was one of my favorite series of last year, one of my favorite books of last year. And so I just felt like Delicious Monsters did not have the same level of like character work I felt like was really lacking in comparison to her debut series. Um, and I do feel like the writing, I did not enjoy the writing as much. I definitely saw more flaws in the writing in Delicious Monsters, interestingly enough. Um, and I just feel like there was a lot more potential in this book that was not met in my opinion. Again, I don't think this is a bad book. I just think that for me personally, compared to her debut series, it did not have that like magic touch for me. The second book that I would say was a disappointment. This is gonna be so, so bad. But I'm gonna say Yellow Face by R.F. Kuang. Listen, before, <laughs> before anyone comes for me, um, it's not that I dislike this book, but I think that it is by far my least favorite R.F. Kuang book. Um, and if you don't know, I love R.F. Kuang. I'm a stan. I'm a stan, okay? And I think that this is still a great book. Um, and if I were to rate it, which I didn't rate it, I probably would rate it like a 3.5 stars. It's not a bad rating at all, but it's just not my favorite R.F. Kuang. And like, I'm at the point where every time I read an R.F. Kuang book, I expect it to be my new favorite thing. And this one just wasn't. And I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that I just feel like there's a lot of like self-inserting going on, which to be fair is the point of the book, right? Like the, the book does what it needs to do. So like, I'm just saying that this is not the perfect book for me personally, if that makes sense. Anyway, we're gonna move on before I dig myself further into this hole. Question number six is biggest surprise, and I am actually gonna say the Sweet Verse books by Catherine Moon. So that's Baby and the Late Night Howlers, Lola and the Millionaires, and I also read Bad Alpha. Um, so four of those books, because Lola is split into two. Um, I would say those are my biggest surprise. I didn't love Bad Alpha. I think I gave that one two stars, but the other ones I gave 3.5, four stars. I really had so much fun with these books, and I think that they're so, so fun. Um, um, which I never thought I would say about an Omegaverse book, but it's just like, it was very surprising to me how much I enjoyed it. There was a lot of depth to the character work and the themes um, and kind of the exploration of like abusive relationships and trauma. And I thought that that was like really well explored in the book. I think that these are so much fun. I have to shout out obviously Mina from Mina Reads for introducing the series to me. I just thought that these were such a fun time for like when I was like having a really tough time mentally at work, etc., just to like sit back after work and just relax with one of these smutty, smutty books. I loved it. It was a great time. I had a great time. They're all on Kindle Unlimited, so you can like read them for free if you have Kindle Unlimited. Um, but yeah, I would definitely say those are my biggest surprise of the year um, so far. And then question number seven is favorite new author, debut or new to you? And I have saved Miss Vila Roth for this question, even though realistically, I wanna answer Vila Roth for every single question. But without a doubt, my favorite new author right now is Vila Roth because like, like in the last two weeks alone, I have read five and a half of her books. Um, I love them. They're amazing. Um, I don't actually know if she has any other books outside of the series. I just enjoy the Blood Grey series so much. If you missed my last reading vlog where I became obsessed with this series, um, I will link it down below so you can watch it. But this is a vampire fantasy romance, like political fantasy situation. I fucking love these books. Again, I got to shout out the creator who got me into these books, and that is Steph from Stephanie Bookish. Um, 
I have no regrets. I have no regrets. Again, all on Kindle Unlimited. You can read them <laughs> if you have Kindle Unlimited for free. Um, and I just love the series so much. Like, I just think it is so good. If you enjoy slow burn, slow, no plot, vibes only, kind of like romance, political fantasies, I think you'll like the series. If you don't enjoy slow paced stuff, though, it's probably not for you. There really is like not a lot of plot at all, um, but I just, I love this series so much. And I, for one, am gonna be keeping my eye out for whatever this author comes out with next. Um, obviously, I think that there's more books in this series, but I don't know what else she is gonna have outside of the series, but I am a, a stan, if you will. <laughs> Question number eight is newest fictional crush, which I usually skip because I just like, don't feel that way about like book characters. However, um, I'm gonna like slightly change it and I'm gonna change it to, I don't know what I'm gonna call it, but like basically Leo's parents, Leo from the Blood Grey series, I want his parents to adopt me so fucking badly. Like his parents are so fucking sweet. This is not a day at my own parents, by the way. I just think that his parents are the sweetest, the most supportive, like the most wholesome, best parents ever. And I just want to be adopted into that family. So it's not like a crush per se, but it's just like, I just want to be a part of this little family so fucking badly. Um, I love them. They're so wholesome, so cute. Love. Question number nine is newest favorite character. And this is going to be a character from uh, a manga series. One of my new favorite manga series of all time, Snow White with the Red Hair. Um, and my favorite character is Obi. If you're not familiar with the story, it's basically a cozy slice of life fantasy situation. Um, and the two main characters are Zen and Shiryuki. Zen is the second prince of this kingdom and then Shiryuki is a court herbalist. Um, and it's about their romance but Obi is um, like a mercenary assassin turned bodyguard um, and he is part of their like little group and he eventually starts working for Zen. Um, and I just love Obi. If you've read the series you know Obi is just like in my head he is canonically bisexual. Okay I'm just gonna put this out there. He is canonically bi. I will take no other explanations for the shit that he does in the series. But I just love Obi. I think he's such a complex and interesting character. He's so like funny and he like the way he opens up to this like new group of friends despite being such like a lone wolf for so long from being like a mercenary. Like I just love his character development. The way that he is so loyal to both Shiryuki and Zen. And he's like low-key in love with both of them in my opinion. Um, and I just love the three of their dynamics so much. But like Obi just like speaks to my soul in like a way that the other characters in the series, despite me loving all of them, by the way, nobody speaks to my soul the way that, that Obi does. And I just love Obi so much. Number 10 is book that made you cry. And the only ones I can think of off the top of my head are Untethered Sky by Fonda Lee, which I've already talked about. And a couple of moments throughout the series of the Blood Grey series, which again, I've already fucking talked about. Um, so those are the only ones that I can think of. Um, number 11 is book that made you happy. And instead of like a singular book that made me happy, I'm going to talk about the copious amounts of high school slice of life shoujo manga I have read this year. Um, I have always been into shoujo romance, um, but I started reading more of them this year and I started reading more kind of like currently running series rather than just like rereading my favorites this year. And I have discovered a number of like new favorite series and like new series that I really enjoy that I want to keep up with, um, which I'm usually like pretty bad at. And so like I'm really, really enjoying all of these. Not all of them are licensed yet, so apologies for that. But the ones that I can talk about that are licensed that I've really, really enjoyed this year that I want to shout out are obviously Snow White with the Red Hair, Ron the Peerless Beauty, I also really loved. I reread Waiting for Spring and I enjoyed it so much more the second time around. Another one that I really, really loved was In the Clear Moonlit Dusk. That is a highlight for me. I've actually reread it like three times since I read it the first time <laughs> already. And then two that are being licensed later this year and possibly next year, I believe, um, are How I Met My Soulmate uh, by the same mangaka as Waiting for Spring, and then Tonari no Stella, which I don't know what the English title is going to be yet, but I will put it in the description down below if I can find it. Um, and this is by the same mangaka as Ron the Peerless Beauty. And I really, really loved these two, and they're both getting licensed in English. Um, I know that How I Met My Soulmate is coming later this year, and I believe Tonari no Stella next year. Number 12 is favorite book to film adaptation that I saw this year. Um, I don't watch a lot of film adaptations, but I'm going to talk about an anime adaptation of a um, shoujo manga series that I really enjoy called Loving Yamada at level 999. The anime just finished um, and I actually love the anime. I would almost borderline say that I like the anime more than the manga in terms of like this, the chapters that they covered because I actually think that the beginning of Yamada-kun is like 
a little slow. I don't love it as much. Whereas like, I love the like current kind of arcs that were in like the second half of the manga that's currently out. However, of the parts that were covered in the anime, I actually think that the anime did such a great job at bringing these characters to life at kind of like inserting the humor in a way that works really, really well. And I thought that this was so well done. And I was so happy with the um, anime adaptation. And like, usually if I've read the manga first, I'm usually disappointed by an anime adaptation. So I was really pleasantly surprised by this one. Question number 13 is favorite video you have done so far in this year. And honestly, I'll be honest, I have not done that many videos this year, but I will say my favorites are probably the Blood Grace series one from last week, just because like, I feel like you can really tell what a great time I had in that. Um, I also really love my Shoujo and Jose recommendations video. Um, and I also am currently editing a video that I really, really love, um, which I'm not going to talk about yet because I haven't put it out yet. Number 14 is most beautiful book you've bought so far this year or received. And I honestly can't think of one right now. So I'm just going to skip on this question. I'm sure there's tons of books with beautiful covers. But yeah, like I just can't I can't think of one off the top of my head. Um, and then number 15 is what books do you need to read by the end of the year? Uh, so many, like so many. Um, I will say I think that my top <laughs> books that I need to read are the third book in the Burnt Empire series. Uh, what's it called? The Blind King's Wrath, because I'm pretty sure that was one of my answers for last year and I still haven't read it. Uh, the Spear Cuts Through Water, because I read half of it last year and I still haven't finished it. And Mammoths at the Gates, which is the upcoming Singing Hills cycle book that comes out in a couple of months. Um, I do have an e arc for it, so I probably should read it ASAP. Um, but those are my answers for the mid year book freakout tag. I'm sorry, this is a bit of a chaotic one, probably not that interesting. I just probably said Vila Roth and Blood Grace way too many times. Um, <laughs> but it is what it is. She has really taken over my life, quite frankly. Um, and that is it for today. As always, if you watch till the end, I super, super appreciate it. If you like this video, please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and comment down below. Let me know some of your answers to these questions. Um, and if you like this video and you want to see more from me, please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. That is it for today. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you all next time.